Betsy's a farmer. Um, she works with Food for Maine's Future on these kinds of issues, and she's going to talk to us about some of the issues um, related to that aspect that the, that the Trans-Pacific Partnership and these other agreements would impact. Thanks, Betsy. Thanks. So now you know why I look the way I do. I, I came straight from the Fedco Seed Warehouse <laughs> to uh, where we are pulling seeds just as fast as we can to get them in the hands of farmers and so that they can uh, start their gardens and, and, and plant their crops this year. So, so I, I found out at 2 o'clock that I was giving this, this talk, so I'm going to... I'm winging it here. Um, but I wanted to talk about it. I was just, um, in February, I was at the National Family Farm Coalition winter meeting in DC, where we spent a lot of time talking about the impact of the TPP will have on small family farms. And I went to, to both Congressman Poliquin and Congresswoman Pengree's office and talked to their trade staff about um, the fact that we hear that, P that, that our representatives are hearing from the big farmers that this is going to be great for them, and perhaps it is going to be great for them, but it's going to be very bad for, f for small family farms. Um, the competition, uh, trying, trying to make a living on the land is already difficult enough for small farms, and it's just going to get worse. So the big agribusiness commodity farmers, yes, perhaps they are going to find a a more ready market for their um, products in, in the Pacific Basin, but, but uh, the small family farm is not. In fact, uh, Congresswoman Pengree's staffer asked me to try to find small farms that are exporting, and so I put that out to the National Family Farm Coalition family, and no, I can't, I've, I've looked, Shelley, I can't find anybody, <laughs> so that's the answer to that question. Um, and, and these are family farmers from all across the country that, that are, are feeling the, the, the weight of, the, of the, um, how bad this, this um, agreement is going to be for them. Um, and I think one of the prime examples of, of, of how, uh, as Cynthia was talking about, the, the, the fact that it's going to negate our own sovereign laws is um, the recent cool amendment. I don't know whether any of you know about that, the country of origin labeling for meat, which um, w we were threatened, I can't remember which countries were threatening to sue us, but some countries, yeah, it was, can it was Canada. Canada, Canada was threatening to sue us over labeling meat um, f with its country of origin so that people can know what's in their food, what a concept, like, you know, GMO labeling and a few other things, which this trade um, is going to negate, but what happened in our Congress was because of the threat of the millions and millions of dollars that this was going to cost to, to defend this suit in these closed tribunals, Congress just changed our law and said that we will no longer require country of origin labeling on the meats in our supermarkets. So it's, it, that's just a minor example of, of the impact that it's going to have on our food system and, and uh, I can't, I, it would take me all night to explain all the impacts it's going to have on small family farms, but it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Once the, once the market is flooded with organic food from the Pacific Basin, um, the, our, our struggling small organic farmers here in Maine are going to have a hard time. I have heard rumors that the potato farmers in Aroostook County think that it's going to be good for them because all the potatoes in Idaho are going to go to the Pacific Basin and then we can fill the void. I, I'm, I don't think I really buy, buy that concept, but um, yeah, so those are the, those are the things that I, that I had written down to talk to you about tonight, and um, thanks for having me.